Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm an Airbus A330 pilot and welcome to a tutorial on payload and performance in the Airbus A330. We've just finished up our FMS preparation and with this we are basically done with our pre-flight. At this moment we would just be sitting here waiting for the boarding to complete in order to eventually receive the load sheet. Now. The boarding in the A330 takes roughly 15 to 25 minutes depending on how many jetways you have available, how many passengers you have and what kind of flight it is. On holiday routes for example it typically takes a little bit longer since you don't have many frequent flyers. On city flights you typically have a lot of frequent flyers and therefore things do go a little bit faster. In any case this is the point in time where we just sit around chit chat around and just wait for the boarding to be completed. Now talking about the boarding, let's go ahead and have a look at typical payloads that we could expect in an Airbus A330. So normally in the A330 you have a zero fuel weight between 150 on the smaller models such as the 200 up to around 165 in extreme cases 170 tons depending on the amount of passengers. Now typical typical payloads are somewhere in the region of a load factor between 70 and 90 percent but we do actually see full aircraft rather often as well. Now in terms of cargo usually on holiday flights you have only the passengers bags which can be anywhere around three to five tons but on flights going to destinations where cargo as um, payload is also a factor you normally have somewhere between three to five in extreme cases seven or eight tons of cargo on board now depending on what the load is for instance if you fly to Canada and you are coming home with a lot of fish on board then round about seven tons fit into the cargo holds of the A330. Now that's the general idea of the payload here so if you take an A330 300 anywhere around 160 tons zero fuel weight is normally a typical weight. Now once the load sheet is actually received, when the boarding is completed, that's when we have to go into the final takeoff performance calculations. Remember we have already done our preliminary calculations earlier during the day, but now we have to calculate the final performance. So first things first, let's go from top to bottom, left to right. We're going to start with our departure runway. We've already said that we are departing runway 180 in Frankfurt. However, we should consider taking some intersections into account as well. If we have a look at the Lido ground chart over here, then we can see that Romeo 18 has a couple of different intersections available. Lido typically marks approved intersections with this little um, triangular symbol over here. So if we look at Romeo 07 center as an example, we can see that Lima 20 is an available intersection, Lima 17 is available, Lima 16 is available and so on. The takeoff run available from the particular intersection in question is then denoted with the black number next to it. So for example at 07 center Lima 20 we have a takeoff run available of 3942 meters. Likewise since we are departing runway 18 today it's a little bit hard to see over here but we could reasonably inter expect intersection Lima for our takeoff which over here is denoted at 3817 meters. So let's go ahead and enter that in the takeoff run available field over here. So that's 3817 meters over here. Now the runway surface condition is currently dry, other option is wet in the simulator, a little bit simplified but look outside it's dry it's dry if it's raining you take you take wet in terms of the wind we have to be a little bit more careful let's go ahead and download the latest winds to see what we currently have so we've got 060 at 5 variable between 030 and 090 we should always calculate the most conservative wind so that's the one that gives us either the least headwind or the greatest possible tailwind in our case today departing of runway 36 
oh sorry, runway 18, the worst possible wind could come from 360 degrees. So 030 is actually closest to that, resembling a 5 knot tailwind. So 030 at 5 would be the um, sensible wind to enter over here. So let's make that 030 slash 5. We can take the temperature straight from here, 5 degrees, and the QNH 1031. And those can simply be uh, taken over, so we've got 5 degrees, 1031. Next up we go to our takeoff weight. Now, if we have a look at our load sheet over here, we can see our live gross weight is 175.8. Now, we typically use around 3 to 500 kilograms of taxi fuel. But I would recommend just to round the number. If you've got 175.8 over here, 175.5 is a safe bet. You could even make it 176, then you know you will be on the safe side. So today let's make it 175.5 in order to have a reasonable value over here. So weight is going to be 175.5. Config 2 is the default flap setting for takeoffs in the A330, both 200 and 300, as it serves as a tail strike protection. Now, depending on which aircraft you come from, in the 737, for example, we would only have a tail clearance of about 50 centimeters. With flaps 5, which is the optimal setting that we've been using over there, in other aircraft, such as the A330, with Config 2, you have an entire meter of tail clearance. So, the A330 is not all that prone to tail strike at all. However, it is something you should have in your mind and config 2 therefore is the default setting now these rules do change with operators though so if you do one plus f that's also fine depending on the circumstances however if you're at a hot and high airport config one plus f might provide you quite an increased performance limited takeoff weight so that is something to try if you find yourself performance limited we normally keep the air conditioning, aka the packs, turned off. The anti-ice is used as needed, so basically with a temperature of 10 degrees Celsius or less and visible moisture of whatever form, remember fog and clouds are also moisture, we would turn the anti-ice on. The force toga switch is only used when wind shear is to be expected, so for example with thunderstorms around or very strong gusts. Now, let's go ahead and hit calculate, have it recalculate the latest takeoff performance data. And here we go, we got a flex temperature of 60 degrees, and the speeds 149, 152 and 155. As mentioned, in the real world you have to type those in manually as you can't uplink the data from the EFB. However, to show you how it works, you can simply press the um, send to FMGS button over here, and when you do that, then you get the uplink over here, which basically shows in the small letters next to the larger ones we have entered earlier. Okay, hit confirm takeoff data, and with that our takeoff data is uplinked. Last but not least, when the load sheet has arrived, we gotta go to the init B page, and over here we also have to enter our weights. So, we have a zero fuel weight of 156.9, and the CG is 26.5. So 156.9 is in there, and 26.5 can be entered as zero fuel CG. The block fuel is now 18.9, the APU has used a little bit of fuel, so let's also update that. And here we can see takeoff weight 175.5 is calculated by the aircraft. Perfect! That's exactly what we need. Alright, once that's done, we select the takeoff performance page on the pilot flying site the flight plan page on the pilot monitoring site and now we can go ahead and close up aka go to the ground page close all the doors make sure that the parking brake is set down here the flight deck door is closed and then we can disconnect the external power now disconnecting the external power is something very important. You always gotta deselect it up here first before removing the power from the aircraft itself. Otherwise, injury and harm to ground personnel can happen when they pull the power off while it is still on the bus. 
So, finally, let's head outside the aircraft and we are going to remove the chocks down here. So, chocks are removed and back inside and with that our performance calculation is done and at this point we would go ahead and request our clearance from air traffic control, request our pushback clearance and then get on the go. That however is going to be for a separate video so I would like to thank you very much for watching. Hope you have learned something today. As always be sure to like, comment and subscribe and if you're up for more I would love to see you as a channel member. Last but not least, if you really like what I'm doing on this channel, I would appreciate a small donation through the Buy Me Coffee link in the video description below. With that out of the way, thank you very much and I'm looking forward to see you all again on the next one.